Lesson four, the French Revolution. And I'm going to apologize ahead of time because there's a lot to the French Revolution. So there's going to be a lot of twists and turns, and I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible. So again, you're going to notice that the people of France, after they saw the United States kind of overthrow their government, they're going to say, hey, we can do that. So I want you to see how they did it. So how did they do it, and what were the effects? So again, today's target, or this lesson's target, is how did the people of France change their system of government? So here are two different statements that I want you to think about. And if you look at the top one, it says the Americans sought independence from British imperial rule, but they kept British law in much of the British social and cultural heritage. Meaning, even though we broke away from Britain, we kept a lot of the way they do things, a lot of the culture, if you will. But France, they are going to do something dramatically different. On the other hand, French revolutionaries sought to replace the ancien regime, or the old order, with the new political social and cultural structures, meaning they want to scrap it all and they want to start over. So a hard reboot if for you computer people. So if you see the difference, we just didn't want to be controlled by Britain anymore. We're France. They want to start over. And here's where you got to see where it starts. So this is Louis the 16th. He is going to be the one that's going to be basically thrown out here shortly. And his wife, Marie Antoinette, did not really help things as much. But why this matters to us is that his father, we talked about a couple of lessons ago, but going into Urza's grandfather, eh, there's a lot of Louis I can't remember, but this is States General I'm going to revisit here in a little bit. And if you want to know, this is the assembly or the social classes, I guess you would say, that represent the French population. There are three groups. And if you want to think of them as social classes, maybe that's a little bit easier way to think about it. But they're going to have a huge argument, and it's going to be about debt because they picked up the tab for us breaking apart from uh, Great Britain. So thanks, France. We owe you one. But unfortunately, it caused a revolution in your country. So here's where you're going to see why people get upset. So the first estate, or the upper class, is mostly made up of church people, and they only have about 100,000 people there. The middle class, or the second class, has about 400,000 people, and they're the nobles. They're the, what would be rich people in our current terms. However, then it's landowners. Okay, And then the third estate is literally everyone else. So all the laborers, all the farmers, all the people that make things like the blacksmiths and stuff like that, they're all in that last set. And there's 24 million. So regardless of how many people are in each estate, each estate only gets one vote. So what you commonly saw is the first estate and the second estate, they commonly team up and they try to outvote the third estate. So the third estate really gets screwed over quite a bit. So in this political cartoon, bottom guy here, third estate, top two guys here are the first two estates. So as you can imagine, this is unfair. So the third estate actually wants to voice their concerns. So they actually had a trick played on them. The first and the second estates are going to vote for a break during an estate's general town hall meeting, I guess you would say, and Louis the Sixteenth are all kind of sitting around and talking. However, when they vote on this break and the third estate leaves, they're going to get locked out. And this is the straw that broke the camel's back. So they actually voted to say, yep, we are leaving. This is actually called the Tennis Court Oath. And it starts this new thing called the National Assembly. So worth noting... This is what that bottom tier or that third estate is now going to call themselves. So when they do that, they actually say, we're going to no longer listen to the king of, king of France. So the majority of the French population was in which estate? So where this National Assembly is going to get a little bit extreme is that they are going to say, we are going to riot. And where you're going to see, they're actually going to storm into something called Bastille. And if you, this is like a prison slash where they keep all the guns, if you will. And when they go and they break in, they're going to try to arm themselves to kind of fight for themselves. They're actually going to cut off people that are trying to stop them. And they're going to be marching around holding up saying, don't screw with us or your head's going to get cut off. You can see this guy right here is kind of doing it. But why this matters to us is that this is an extremism, if you will. And with all the rebellions that are now going to start breaking, breaking apart all over France, this is going to be a big deal because now the country is basically on fire. So the upper, the third estate 
gets their way. The first and the second, they kind of basically listen to their demands and changes are going to be made. But in the middle there, there was actually an official declaration. And similar to the American Revolution and their declaration of independence away from their monarchy, the third estate's going to draft something very similar saying the same things. Okay, and they focused their own freedoms, liberty, and they basically to ensure that all people should be the same. All men are created equal, if you will. So those changes we were talking about before, the list are all right here. You're going to see that the church power was taken away from them. You're going to notice that the first and the second estate, they're going to be treated as equals, and they had to declare a loyalty to this new way of France. But the biggest change is in their government. They actually shift to what's called a constitutional monarchy, and people actually had to vote. So what a constitutional monarchy is, is it basically strips away the absolute power of said monarch. They don't care if God gave you power. You have to still have your power in check. So that's what I mean by the strip the king of most of his powers. But the king was still in charge of passing the laws officially, I guess you would say. So he had some powers. Not like he had nothing, but he didn't have near as much as what he did before. So, true or false, France was still an absolute monarchy following the Third Estates Rebellion. All right, so here's the cheat sheet of the French Revolution, because here's where it's going to get kind of tricky. So we just talked about that red circle right there. I still have all of this blue circle to talk about, and it's going to start changing fast. So notice the years. They don't stick around very long. So try to stay what type of government did they establish in each of the slides that I talk about from here on out. So here's where you're going to see where it all starts to become known as the reign of terror. So where this all starts again, or where this all comes back to is the neighbors of Austria right here and Prussia, which is like a better term, like Oh, sorry, pressure right here is like Germany. So why this matters to them is that they're also absolute monarchs. And if people overthrew an absolute monarch in Louis XVI in France, well, they're kind of sweating bullets, if you will. So Austria and Prussia declare war on France to basically stop this people uprising and restore power to Louis XVI. Sounds like a good idea, except for... The people in France did not like that. And they're radicals called Jacobins, and they actually murder Louis XVI. They cut off his head and Marie Antoinette's head, by the way. So they draft a bunch of men. They're going to start officially go into war. And as a republic, they're going to fight. And they're going to fight for their own freedoms. So at this stage of the French Revolution, what type of government was it? So where this is all going to hit an even more extreme is that this guy, Maximilien Rospierre, is actually going to say, we need to start having a harsher punishment for treasonous acts. So he actually used terror or threats to promote these ideas. So him and the guillotine are going to be super good friends. And this is where you're going to see those radicals are going to be executed left and right, or they're going to be imprisoned left and right, except for a major problem. Rospierre actually breaks his own law and he actually has his own head cut off because of his treasonous acts against the state of France. So too bad and so sad. But now we enter in one of the other parts of that blue circle and it's called the directory. And it's going to be basically a group of dudes that's going to sit around and basically talk about how government should be ruled. And they're going to make a major mistake. They are going to promote this up-and-cunning general named Napoleon Bonaparte, and they're going to give him military control. But with that, he's going to have control of a bunch of dudes that are going to start following him into the ends of the earth of war. And he's going to say, you know, I can do this better than you guys. So he's going to take his army, and he is going to basically overthrow or stage a coup against the directory. And all the while, he declares himself emperor, okay, or a dictator for our terms. And how far did he go? 
he actually crowned himself, which I have a picture of it here in a little bit. But going into the question, at this stage of the French Revolution, what type of government was it? So here's that picture. So this right here is Napoleon, and he said the only person that has the power to coronate me or crown me king or emperor is me. So notice the Pope, church officials, they weren't good enough. He had to do it himself. So kind of an interesting thing. But here is again where it gets kind of interesting because when he comes into power, you're going to notice that he is going to promote individualism and basically say, if you're the right man for the job, you're going to get it. It's not going to be who your daddy was or what social class you're in. And he's actually going to give land back to landholders. So this is kind of a good idea. The only thing that's really going to drive him to the point where it fails is that he's going to make some monumental mistakes and we're in terms of war and fighting, if you will. So that's what's going to be one of his greatest downfalls. So then from here on out, you're going to notice that it's going to bounce around from monarchy to constitutional monarchy to republic, just one right after another. And I'm not going to really go through all these because that's not really the big idea. But the biggest idea is down here the Third Republic. This is where France actually is today. So what type of government do they have today? It's actually a republic. This is their prime minister. His name is Emmanuel Macron. And the, or sorry, this is his president, and this is the prime minister down here. And I don't know how to pronounce his name, and I apologize for that. So as of March of 2022, this is how it sits. But last question. Currently, what type of government does France have? <laughs> 